All right, now Vladimir's dream came true. We got the Pico scope out. And what we're gonna do here, we have to determine what kind of control signal this magic box provides. Uh, you said if it's a pulse width modulated yep. ground oh, control, then so. your uh, creation should, should, should do the trick. Yep. So the setup here, we have two channels. First channel is on the coil control wire that sends the RPM signal to our box. So on the schematic, get that over here. Channel one is on, let's see, see pin three on the governor. That's the control wire um, on the ignition coil. And for that, we need an attenuator. Let's see, 10 to one attenuator right here. That'll be like our RPM signal. Channel two. Channel 2 is on pin 4, which is the control wire for the governor slash actuator. Um, but right now, we're not hooking up the actuator because we don't want to burn up the box. We just have a substitute load. And what better substitute load than just a test light? And you can already see it's 12 volts. See, that's 12 volts because the test light is already connected to battery positive. Now as we run this thing and we increase the RPMs, the controller should, um, you know, the test light will get dimmer and we should see that on the control side. So basically, if the voltage is high, the controller is not grounding the test light, which means it wants the RPMs to go lower. If it wants the RPMs to go higher, it should actually ground, ground out the test light and the bulb will get brighter. So very simple check. We're going to fire it up play around with the throttle and see what kind of control uh, this box provides. Okay, so let's fire it up. Okay. Perfect. Let's stop the scope and analyze some data. Okay, cool. So we can actually see right here where the RPMs were low, it's grounding out the test light and we're near zero volts. And you can actually uh, calculate the RPM by uh, putting in some cursors and whatnot, but we're not going to do that right now. We want to see this. This is the magic of the controller. This is the pulse with modulated signal. So are you happy, Vladimir? Oh, yep. This is fantastic. So Looks here, promising. it's about 50% duty cycle, so it's, you know, that's where it wants to keep the throttle. And once we really raise the RPMs, uh, it's not grounding the test light here anymore, so it completely shuts off the okay. ground side switch. Can we switch. look at the transition moment? Okay, here's the transition moment. Does it increase? Absolutely. So you can see the, yep, the pulse width. Oh, yeah. Here it's smaller, 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 and turns it off completely. Okay. Very, very cool. That should work. Yep. So you can see here, you get more duty cycle. And then the other transition, as you go this way. Yeah. Very nice. And it should actually, there you go. Super Starts. cool. Super, super cool. Okay, so. Um, Vladimir is going to show us his little diagram and the setup, and we're going to try to implement it. Alright, here's the real genius, and he, uh, from scratch, built this gizmo. Heat sink, power transistor, and it has how many connections, Vladimir? One. Um, four connections. Two, three, four. Alright, now, what is this? Well, here's what it is. You, you even drew it in the... Schematic drawing program? Yeah, easy day. It's a free online program. Okay, we'll have to check that out too. So here's the here's the schematic, right? Yep. So this is our control pin on the electronic governor. Correct. And we'll say it's ground side switched. Yep. So the more ground this provides, the more our governor should open. Yep. That's, that's the idea. And before, originally, the original circuit is power feed to the governor, right? And then yep. from the governor, straight to pin four. Correct. And we think that because 
too much current went through the governor, it burned up the box. Yep. Now, but it's still working, governor. The governor is still working. Yeah. But it, it is drawing a lot of amps, like five amps. Yep. And, you know that's that's probably too much for this box to take. So this circuit is designed to minimize the current going through the box and instead put it through this guy, right? Yep. With a heatsink. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so that's very a lot safer. Safer Correct. to do. Yep. Okay. Um, so basically, you know. Uh, how, how does this work again? Uh, basically, <laughs> this uh, power MOSFET mm -hmm. uh, mirrors uh, the same as do the electronic okay. governor. Okay, so this, you know, so when this goes ground as side switch. As this goes ground, down. this goes ground too. Yep, okay, and that grounds the actual yep. governor. Correct. And this, this is the high current. Yep, it's uh, IRF 540. It can carry mm -hmm. 19 amps of current. So 19 amps max. And it will be fused with a 15 amp fuse. Okay, so I think we already have a fuse here. We'll, we'll check uh -huh. what this is. Okay, um, okay so 15 amps maximum you, you said yep. it should yep. be. Mm -hmm. Good. So <clears throat> also we got here um, <clears throat> uh, this diode. Okay. It, uh, in theory, it can protect uh, these MOSFETs uh -huh. from uh, flyback voltage. Wow. Um, so it's an anti-spiking diode. Yeah, correct. So basically, when this turns off, the, cur the current through the governor coil still wants to keep going. Yep, yep. yep. And instead of spiking the, uh, the MOSFET, yep. it actually just goes whoop, right back, back correct. to the feed. Correct. Uh, this is a very standard thing on any solenoid coil. Yep, I think so. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, so that's... And that is, uh, where is that built in here? Uh, it's not uh, built in here, we're gonna connect it right at the governor actuator. Oh, okay, so that's a right separate at the thing. Post. Yep. Okay, got it. Uh -huh. So we're gonna jump from positive to negative yep. through this diode. Excellent. I like it. Mm hmm. So otherwise. So, and a couple of pull up and uh, pull down resistors just mm -hmm. uh, to make this all work. Okay, and why do you have two, two power transistors here? Why not just connect the gate to our control box? Uh, in fact, to turn on the end channel MOSFET, you uh -huh. have to pull it to the power. Okay, so this is power side switched, right? Yeah, this is a power side switch, and power it gets switch. its power through a P channel MOSFET. Okay. And I, I and, could uh, only find uh, this MOSFETs and end channel MOSFET is uh, a bit better. Uh -huh. It has a lower RDS so uh, on um, resistance, so it will be cooler. Um, it will run cooler. Cooler, yep. And okay. it can withstand higher voltage spikes if there will be any. Very cool. This is, so this will be uh, bulletproof. So this uh, is N channel. Yes, so. <laughs> this is P channel. Yep. And this is negative switched, right? Yep. So basically you have positive feed here. Yep. To turn this fuse. transistor on, mm -hmm. you have to pull to ground okay. number four, as electronic governor does. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And then when it switches on... And then so on, the current will go... It provides through here power to the gate of an end channel MOSFET and in uh -huh. and will turn this on. So the governor actuator will Very get its cool. ground path. So this is plus minus. So when this is positive, it'll let current th flow through. Correct. Okay, excellent. And then uh, you said this resistor right here. Oh, this resistor is just in case something goes wrong with <laughs> my handcraft. Yes. <laughs> so we can. Uh, um, Protect the expensive protect, part. Uh, the governor, it <laughs> yes. will be only about 15 milliamps through a 1K resistor if something goes wrong here. Okay, so even if we short this to whatever power, only 15 milliamps will, 15 will go milliamps. through if this Probably it will get a bit hot, but, but I, I it's, think it's okay. it will be okay. Uh -huh. So our, te our test lamp right now from battery positive, how much does that draw? Like. 150 milliamps, maybe About 200. Two. Yep. So that's connected to pin four right now. That's our temporary load. Yeah. So instead of our test light, we're going to connect this guy. So let's get to it, Vladimir, okay. and uh, we'll try it out and hopefully disconnect that really long yellow thing. <laughs> so this thing, the whole metal block heatsink, will actually be positive, right? Yep. It'll be constant positive. So we need to mount this to a wooden block so it doesn't ground out on the body there. Because that would cause the fuse to blow, right? Yep. So or the governor to work all the time. Or yeah, and do full throttle. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it'll do. It'll do full throttle. Yep. And go five amps through this thing. Yep. So 
this screw, you know, we found the board, so it won't go all the way through. It'll just screw right into the board. It will mount this to the, you know, somewhere on the near the controller. So I'm just going to saw off a piece here, about that big, and that should do the trick. Make it pretty. <laughs> okay, great. Okay, so we have the uh, Ladimitus Creation here temporarily installed. So it's on a wooden block, so it's isolated from the chassis. And then the wiring connections, again, very temporary. We just want to make sure it works before soldering and putting in proper connections. Uh, so let's see. <clears throat> the what's the uh, the main uh, the main wiring connections? Here's the ground, so we got that connected to this bolt. Then the control wire. This pin number four. We just installed the jumper. I know it's a fuse, but whatever. And it goes to this transistor right here, the first one in the schematic. And then the one on the heatsink, the one that's actually going to control the main current flow for the for the actuator here. So the blue wire, so this is a constant feed, the red. The blue wire is the control wire. It goes here. So instead of going to the control box and frying it, now it goes to the power MOSFET, right, Vladimir? Yep. And again, temporary connection, but Vladimir thinks it won't work, but I think it's okay. <laughs> Now, uh, just to verify that the controller is controlling its, you know, doing its thing, we have a test light here, and this will just be bright and dim depending on what the, uh, the controller does, and we'll see the actuator move, hopefully, hopefully. We haven't tried it yet. This is the moment of truth, kind of. So, let's turn on this guy. Earmuffs? Uh, sure. <laughs> sure. Okay, earmuffs. So... So we have a, oh, test light is connected to power, we should, so it's grounding up right now? It looks like that. Through, through what? Hmm. Now let's see, if we disconnect this guy, so it's grounding out through your MOSFET. Okay. Is that normal or not? It shouldn't be, right? Um, I think as soon as the MOSFET. Oh, okay. But when we voltage, when we power it up, yep, it should close. It should, it should close. Okay. So that was. Okay, it's already closed by the static electricity. You. Really? Oh, it's interesting. Or maybe not. Hmm. Okay. Let's try again. On. Okay. And well, let's start it up. It tried. It tried. But it obviously something but it, but it failed. Wrong. Okay, so let's see. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, it, it technically worked, but there's some oscillation going on. Now, is that due to the controller? Maybe. Um, we have to do a little more troubleshooting. Well, it worked, but it did not work as planned. However, if we just disconnect the whole thing and forget about the governor, just start it up and see if it stalls out when we try to lift and raise the, you know, like put it under maximum load and see what happens. So I guess now we should try it from the platform and if we can control this thing and it works on its, you know, whatever high idle it's set on, I don't think we even need the throttle control because we can start it, you know, you can warm it up a little bit with your hand, we can still have the old school throttle cable because the control system right now is falling into this oscillation where it goes high low, high low and it, I don't think it has anything to do with Vladimir's, you know, uh, circuit because the control is coming from the box, right? So, so it, you know, it, the idle or the engine speed drops too much, it like full throttles it, it goes too high, then it shuts the throttle off, so it, it goes into this kind of, I don't know, closed loop oscillation, like an oxygen sensor. But then we can stabilize it with the hand control, and then, you know, the test light's kind of like dim, so everything works. But, you know, it has that issue which is not really critical for the operation and you know if it stalls out you can always restart it from the platform and lower yourself down the only time it really strains is when you're raising the whole platform it's the maximum load so not not really worried about it so let's take it for a real test drive now from the platform and uh, you know I think it will fit, wrap this up okay so final experiment here Vladimir wants to see if his creation, if the command from the controller, a blue trace, matches exactly with the output of uh, his MOSFET, then I guess you'll be happy, right, Vladimir? Yeah. You'll prove your uh, engineering design. And the green trace is just the current going through our governor, right in that ground wire. So I guess all we have to do is start it up and see what the traces look like. Okay. Okay, this is very interesting. The blue trace is the controller, what it wants. The red trace is what is actually happening, and you can see the current draw. Um, so, okay, so what, what happens? When the controller grounds, right, it wants high current. Yep. Right? So the ground side switched. Yep. So it's looking like it's only grounding this much. However, in reality, we have a longer ground period. Right? So we have about... So what's the amperage here? We can measure this. About 3.5 amps, right? Yep. And the actual time difference in our, oh, this is the, this is degrees. We're not interested in degrees. We're interested in just in time. So the, the turn off is the same. Yep. But the turn on, there's 
the actual and we need another where's the shouldn't, shouldn't we have another cursor yeah, it's right there the both of them well okay so I guess we can measure the delta between here and here right so about 100 microseconds over the total duration which is 150 microseconds quite a lot Okay. Wow. I so, so this is a th one third of this. Yep. Is that correct? Yep. Okay. Very interesting. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. I got idea. Idea. Back to the drawing board. Okay. We'll go back to the drawing board, and Vladimir will explain uh, what kind of idea he has. Okay. So the question is, why this crazy oscillation in the uh, RPMs? Well, Vladimir created another another uh, what is it modifications version 2.0 <laughs> yeah. um, because on the oscilloscope we saw that uh, well, I guess you can explain it better the you saying the resistors slowed down the response of your yeah uh, MOSFET the MOSFET has a capacitance mm -hmm. in its gate and uh, mm -hmm. in order it to close it must uh, give away this charge, charge, charge and discharge. This capacitor. And uh, they discharge through a 10k uh -huh. resistor and it's not very fast and there are two of them so we have this lag. I the think lag. so. Okay, so we have a lag in the, you know, we saw that like almost was 50% difference yep. in the duty cycle. So I'm like, well, you know, I had a nice sandwich here while Vladimir was hard at work soldering. And I'm like, well, this controller here it's meant to drive that thing directly. That means several amps of current. If we're controlling the MOSFETs through a, what, a 10K resistor right now? Or uh, 1K? Through a 1K, K, but, uh, but through so, a MOSFET it's about uh, microamps. Yeah, so we're OS. talking about milliamps at best. And this controller is designed to carry amps. So I'm like, you know what? I have a big test light. Let's choose the one amp filaments so this uh, circuit will carry one amp and we'll connect it in uh, parallel from just from a positive to the controller so the controller will actually carry more current now again you might say why does it matter how much current it has but just think of the, the people who designed this it's designed to carry amps instead of milliamps so we just want to get it closer to the ballpark and let's start it up and we'll, it'll, not yet, <laughs> it'll do the oscillation and then let's hook up the test light. Okay, so on, start up. So that got rid of the oscillation, which, I mean, you can't really explain the internals. We don't know what circuitry is inside of there, but it kind of made it happy, right? So, and the RPMs actually stabilized when we lifted the, the basket. It was, it was great. It barely dropped and you saw the test lamps actually got brighter. Yep. Right? Correct. So that was, um, I think it's doing what it should. Now, I'm wondering why they're still lit right now, because we shut this thing off right yeah so why is the controller grounding out our test light right now not exactly sure but we can always switch this off <laughs> the main kill switch and it'll take care of it so we can either install and in try Vladimir's new creation or just hook up a permanent bulb you know automotive bulb and it'll just do its thing. It'll stabilize the, the idle and I think you'll be okay. 
What I want to do right now is do a full test drive of all the functions, you know, roll it back and forth, lift it up, down, whatever, so we have no more issues and we'll feel confident giving this back to the customer. So that's what I want to do right now. Alright, so we proved that at least one amp makes the controller happy. I'm like, well, I don't want to leave this here to make the genie run. How about we come over here to one of these vehicles and bring your, uh, bring the, this. Huh? Hope Jason won't be too mad, but it looks like this Mustang won't ever be back on the road. So what we're gonna do, look, there's a light bulb here, and that should be plenty of amperage that we need, so, is that enough wire? That's enough wire. Oh, I missed one. We're gonna sell this in the Genie. It's gonna be the Mustang Genie Hybrid. So we'll we'll check the amperage of this filament, and if it's like you know, maybe we can even make it two amps. So let's uh, let's try it. All right, here's the amperage of the light bulb. Go ahead. We're gonna turn on the power. Ooh, 2.1 amps. Perfect. Right. Right. It'll just stay burning. Okay, so we're going to use that circuit, we're going to solder it in right into that controller from an ignition feed. Because if we solder it in from here, the light bulb will be on all the time until you turn off the main, the main thing. So, I don't know, maybe we should do that so they don't forget to turn off the main thing. Hmm. But what if he forget? Okay, let's put it into the ignition. Okay, so we're basically done with the uh, permanent wiring except for the power feed. So we got this hooked up, the uh, 2 amp light bulb is just going to hang out here and this is the temporary power feed from our governor, this is a uh, ignition power and it feeds the light bulb and the, uh, the MOSFET, right? Is that, is that correct? Yep. Okay. So let's give it a whirl. <laughs> Pretty ideal. Yep. Thank so, and Ian, it's uh, very cool. We can see by the brightness of the bulb how much throttle demand there is from the controller. Yep. So it's almost like an indicator. I really like the uh, the solution here. So we're going to finish up the power feed wiring and then take it for a real test drive. I'm going to move my car so we can roll this thing around, and we should be very close to the finish line. All set. Here's the last last joint. Excuse me. Yep. All right. This is the last shrink wrap of the project. We have a custom Mustang light bulb, Vladimir's homemade transistor. Should we call it an amplifier? Mm, not really. Okay. Partly. So now, this is the final startup here, right? Yep. Earmuffs, or we're just gonna <laughs> go risk it? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> One time was enough. Okay, here we go. That's on. This is on. That's on. Sweet. <laughs> it works. Hey. <laughs> now the, the test drive will be from the platform, and that's, that'll be the real uh, proof, proof of the pudding. So this has been on here for years. It was bought with this manual throttle cable. I think now is the time when we can finally say the initial customer complaint has been solved. So we can untie this guy without getting stung. Okay, here. We need a special tool for this. Alright. 
Okay. So long, yellow wire. Okay. So let's go to the platform and test drive it from there. All right. Well, Vladimir has to leave now. He has to pack for his for the trip back to the motherland tomorrow. Oh yeah. <laughs> We're almost done with this thing, but not quite as usual. So you know. Well, I'll explain what we have left to do. Well, I do it. I just want to say, man, that was uh, quite the quite the trip to Montana, and then yeah, just uh, yeah, it's kind of spontaneous and awesome, and truly awesome. Yeah, I agree. 100%. And your and your throttle controller works fantastically with the light bulb. Okay, it was all <laughs> ten out of ten. Ten out of ten. Ten out of ten, definitely. <laughs> permanent. So, you're still on a permanent vacation. <laughs> I guess one more day, right? For oh, the permanent oh, vacation. Yeah. One more day. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay, yeah. wonderful time. Thank you very yeah. much. Yeah. Um, <laughs> nice to meet you. Absolutely. So, yeah, great times. And then uh, I'll finish up the Genie here on my own. It'll be kind of hard to test platform switches at the ground control board, but I have some helpers here, so it shouldn't be a big deal. But, okay, Vladimir, have a good, safe trip back to Belarus. Thank you. Yep. And, uh, Thanks everyone for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye bye. Okay, Vladimir left me all alone to, but now Jason's here, so he's gonna help me out flip some switches. Now, what is left? From the ground control, everything works beautifully. So this is boom extend, uh, boom up and down, platform tilt, platform rotate, the whole thing, you know, rotates. And uh, everything works great from here. However, from the platform, from the platform, these things do not work. Extend in, up, down, both of them don't work. Drive control doesn't work, forward and back. And then uh, turn left doesn't work, and then clockwise platform rotation doesn't work. A lot of things, so they're, I think they're all tied together. And if you look at the wiring diagram, there is this uh, safety foot pedal right here, foot switch one, so you platform control, that's hot feed, and then you press on the foot switch and you get a feed on this white wire, and the white wire feeds everything, all the controls, all the boards, everything. So using a test light, I'll demonstrate quickly, but we can see there's a big voltage drop uh, somewhere in that feed circuit. Alright, so here's the issue. From ground controls, <clears throat> let's try the, the basket rotate, platform rotate. So I have a test light hooked up, and the test light will draw a little bit of current, and so will the, the relay. So we click it this way. Test light's moderately bright, about 10.7 volts. That should be enough to energize our, you know, hydraulic switch or whatever and that's fine now the other way rotate left or clockwise counterclockwise this way again see that lights up about 10.5 fantastic now I guess Jason left I'm here. oh you're here yeah. so we're gonna switch the platform control and we're gonna see how dim the test light is and what voltages we get for the same controls. And on the platform you have to hold your foot on a pedal, it's like a safety switch, and then flick the same, you know, uh, control up there. So go ahead. You want to start it? Uh, no, no, just, just hold it one way or the other. Okay, so hold it the other way. Okay, hold it there. So see how dim that is? 7.2 volts, that is not good. We have a pretty big voltage drop somewhere along the way. Let's try the other wire. Okay, and this one, go the other way now. Let's hold it there. 6.8 volts. So 6.8 this way, I'm gonna write that down. And then the other way. 6.7, terrible, that's like half the voltage. Uh, we could try Starting it and doing the same check just to, for just for reference. So go ahead. You can start it Okay, go ahead That works Go the other way Oh Works Back and forth
Okay, so the platform rotate, that was one of the ones that did not work. So we fixed that one, but I still don't like the uh, the voltage drop on there. It's like 7.5 volts that we're getting on our, on our test light, which I mean, energize the relay, but half the other ones don't work. And where is the voltage drop occurring? Well, it's occurring in a lot of places. Um, starting from the foot switch, it goes to this white wire, and then you have all these other switches. So like, these switches have been sitting in the elements for a long, long time, and there's a pretty significant voltage drop right across there. So I think we'll exercise the switches, like the foot pedal and the toggles, and hopefully more of these functions will actually start working. Okay, now we're focusing on the, on the next control, boom, extend, boom, retract. Jason's holding the joystick in one position and look at that dim test light. We have five, five and a half volts. That is not good. Let's go to the other side. So switch the joystick to the other position. 5.2 volts. And in this case, boom, extract, or, uh, extend, out and in. One of them did not work. And I'll show you from the ground controls, switch to ground controls, this is out and in. Look how bright the test light is, and we have 10.4 volts. So we have voltage drop problems from here, from this panel, all the way to the platform. And then just to make sure, we'll do the same check on this one. 10.3, fantastic, look how bright the test light is. And from the platform, we're getting like 5 volts. So let's go up there and do the same thing with the test light and the voltmeter. Okay, guys, I'm positive that we're almost to the root cause of this problem. Now, according to the diagram, this white wire coming from our foot switch feeds all of everything. So I'm just going to put it right here. See, it's nice and, nice and bright. We've got 12 volts. Now just operate one of the switches, Jason. We go down this about 8 volts much dimmer that's 12 or 4 volts drop right here right now why is that occurring so we need to find out is the voltage drop occurring before or after the foot switch because this whole white tree is getting pulled down like 4 volts voltage drop because there's high resistance up the uh, upstream this sounds like a job for the load pro or this is the load pro a test light and you see how I have my meter hooked up to the test light? This is a real quantitative way, instead of just saying, oh, it's bright and it's dim, we actually see four volts voltage drop and that's not, not acceptable. So now we're gonna go after this uh, foot switch or we can even bypass, let's say put positive just from the main power feed here from like, uh, I think it was 19 from here, we'll jump it to a white wire and that'll energize the whole tree and then we'll check all the controls, and if they all work, we'll just chase that one voltage drop. So we're up on the platform. All the controls finally work. We saw the voltage drop, but even with that, after exercising the switches, uh, all the functions work. Maybe a little slow, but uh, you, at every single junction, at every single switch, there's like one volt voltage drop, and it adds up to like, you know, six volts <laughs> going back to the thing. But the main thing is it all works. So Jason here is gonna demonstrate. Pressure's on. Yep. Sweet. And uh, the, the throttle control here, actually just before we get started, we put it to the bunny It's a little sticky, right? Yeah. Unless it's the other one. The other way. There it goes. Yeah, that works. And before you needed to pull that long <laughs> yellow thing. Yeah, but so, the cable. <laughs> so I think thank you to Vladimir for coming up with that yeah. circuit schematic. We just needed awesome. to modify it a little bit. But yeah, let's uh so let's go step step by step here. What's first? Uh platform left and right. Okay. He's going. And then the other way. Alright, 
Awesome. Good. So one and now. Stand out and in. Perfect. Style, won't right style. You can always turn it to the bunny, right? Yeah. It's having a hard time, and then let it calm down a little bit. Yep. So back to the turtle. All right. Back to the bunny. Let it finish its oscillation. Okay. Let's go. Let's go. That's the hydraulic pump. Yeah, it's going a little bit. And we got so it's happy. Down. Yep, it's happy in the middle there. So then the up and down has a little delay, but it'll go up and down. Too wide. Yeah. I want to actually, uh, you know, see the sights from from the genie. Oh, so that tilts the uh, the platform. Oh, okay. Yep. Awesome. Down. Yep, goes right back down. Now let's uh let's drive it around. Now for the drive, there's two features here, right? Yeah, we got uh, four and two. Looks like yeah. So it moves back and forth, but it also steers. So if we turn it to the bunny, this is it. About maybe 0.5 miles an hour. Yeah. So this is the first time it's moved in. Uh, First got it. Could you do this? You could, but it was uh, like I said, hard starting. Okay. Yep. So it it goes. It goes. Fully functional. And then this, the steering you control with your thumb, right? You see this, the wheel turn. That just makes me happy right there. Oh yeah. Perfect. Awesome. I'm just uh, I just want to get above horizontal, just once. Yeah, okay, so the, the tilt, like, I guess you adjust it. I think it does whatever. it automatically, theoretically. And if, if uh, it stalls out, we'll just jump to the roof here. There you go. Or just walk down the nice, boom nice here. boom. This is pretty, uh, pretty amazing. I've, I've actually never been on a cherry picker before, like operational cherry picker. We're almost over the roof line. We gotta do a complete test drive, right? Just, just so we can see over the roof here. You're gonna do your barn, so you get to at least yeah. at least go that high. Yeah. Awesome. So I guess you can rotate this way. All right, let her back down. Now does it go down faster if uh, it doesn't matter what the engine speed is, right? The up and down. I'm not really sure. You saw for a second it wasn't going to go back down, huh? <laughs> well, we had that delay earlier. <laughs> yeah, it'll it'll get you there. Yeah. And I think the more you use it, the better it'll get. The switches will, you know, yeah, improve a little bit and the joysticks. Uh-huh. Too, too bad Vladimir isn't here to actually see this thing yeah, in well, action. You can see it on video, all right? He will. He will. And this is only, it's only 6 p.m. and we've started at? What, 7? Uh, a little later than that, like 8. Yep. So solid, uh, ten, 10 hours in the job, but we got it done. Yeah. And it was all, awesome. all worthwhile. So that's it. Genie works. 
push the button and it stops, right? Got it. And it even, even stops and runs and that was probably the longest diagnostic call slash restoration project I've ever done. I feel done. bad for you, Ivan. <laughs> I will have to Pretty count up how, how many problems we found. It, it's got to be towards 20 separate issues in terms yeah. of wrong wiring, uh, you know, just wires disconnected here and there, the initial engine stuff with the wires bad fuel, wrong. Yeah. Uh, no diodes, back feeding. Yeah, the whole so, but the, the key is to attack these problems is one step at a time. You have to concentrate on one problem, fix it, you know you did something right, and then try the next thing and it probably won't work, so you gotta, you know, keep moving. But if you say, oh, the whole thing doesn't work and let's replace the whole wiring harness, that th does not work. Yeah, that's probably what yeah, happened. Then you, then you, and you built in problems. That's probably what happened initially, yeah. and then this thing went to auction, right? So we didn't have any history on the machine, so. No history on the machine. So there it is. So hopefully, they will last Jason at least a year or so. Just enough to get the work done. <laughs> yeah, um, before he has to call me back. Uh, you know, maybe for the next conference I'll, I'll visit yeah. here. I mean, this I, I do love this area. It is very peaceful, and uh, the, camp, the camp spot was perfect out there. Was it? Okay, and good. The, and yeah. the overlook. Mm -hmm. Kind of reminds me of your place. I haven't been to your place, but I've seen your place on videos. It's so. actually quite similar. Yep, yeah. just farmland and peace and quiet. So with that, that's it. This is part, I don't know, three, four, five, whatever. But uh, thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Okay, hello everybody. A quick video showing the influence of the gate capacitance and pull up resistor on the switching time of the whole circuit. I made a simple circuit to do the same thing as the Genius Electronic Governor driver with the triple five timer. Here it is, uh, which outputs a square wave for a couple of MOSFETs and channel MOSFET and channel MOSFET. Switching time is around 5 kHz and the duty cycle is around 67.5%. The yellow trace uh, on the screen is the output of the controller or as we can call it Gini electronic governor and the blue trace uh, it's uh, the MOSFET that controls the lamp in our case here is the lamp and in the genie project it this MOSFET controls the genie actuator itself and here you can see uh, the uh, blue trace is lagging in comparison with the yellow trace in that it doesn't mirrors it the turn on time is the same but the turn off time is different. We will compare the on and off time of the controller and the MOSFET. In other words, we will compare duty cycles. And uh, here are the results. First, a 5K resistor, as you can see, 5K pull up resistor, the traces we see that we get a 67.5 duty cycle on the yellow trace and on the blue trace let me change that to channel 2 we get 84.4% duty cycle not very close let's change this 5k to a 1k and see the difference. Here you can see I've changed the 5k resistor with a 1k resistor and let's see the duty cycles now. You can see that the blue trace is much closer to the yellow trace and the duty cycle is 71% not 84. Okay what do you think will happen if we change this 1k for about 30 ohm resistor of another light bulb. I've connected 
another lamp in place of a resistor so it's about 20 to 30 ohm of resistance and what we see the blue trace is following the yellow trace and the duty cycles are almost identical 68.1 for the blue trace and for the yellow trace it's 67.9 even 68 thanks for watching